Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, the panicked woman ran, screaming like a scared little mouse. Her friends were hung by the chimney with care, a sign that St. Nicholas had recently been there. He had filled their Christmas with feelings of dread, then he had taken a knife to both of their heads. The last living woman ran away with a snap, but St. Nicholas would make sure she got her long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, a neighbor had come over to see what was the matter. To the door St. Nicholas flew like a flash. He tore open the front door and started to slash. When what to his wondering eyes did appear? A couple of cop cars parked front to rear. With four police officers so lively and quick, they pulled their guns out and drew down on St. Nick. As rapid as lightning, the shouts all at once came, but St. Nicholas shouted and threatened to maim. I'll slash her, I'll end her, that dumb little vixen. Oh, I'll make sure she's dead from all the infliction. You cannot stop me, you can do nothing at all. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. The officers unloaded and let all their bullets fly. The sound of their gunshots echoed across the sky. So back into the house, St. Nicholas flew. With his bag full of goodies, he still had much work to do. He shook his head and turned right around. Then he headed towards his prey with a bound. She shook from the fright, from her head to her feet. The feeling it gave him just could not be beat. A bundle of tools he had flung to the floor, while the police officers tried to bust down the door. Her eyes, how they teared, which made him merry. He envisioned her blood as red as a cherry. First he'd use rope to tie her up like a bow. Then he'd use his sharp knife to make her blood flow. Her shirt had come up, which showed off her belly. And he watched as she trembled like a bowl full of jelly. A loud cracking sound which could have woken the dead told the woman there was nothing more to dread. The police had got in and started to work. They all fired their guns and Santa fell back with a jerk. Seeing his body and his blood-soaked clothes, a vicious bile inside of her rose. She swallowed it down, but her stomach felt weak. That's when she noticed St. Nicholas struggling to speak. She could barely hear him as his eyes lost their light. Merry Christmas to all. Hope it was a hell of a fright. Christmas was a special time for Bart Cleveland. He loved giving gifts more than he enjoyed receiving them, which worked out well because he never received any himself. There was no family left to give him gifts. However, Bart wasn't going to let a little thing like that stop him. This year would be the best Christmas ever. He had a special surprise waiting for the boys and girls of his town. He would give his gift to as many people as he could. It would be the Christmas gift to end all Christmas gifts. No matter how hard anyone tried, they would never be able to top his plans. The ultimate gift. Eagerness bit at him. He wanted nothing more than for Christmas Day to arrive. The suspense was killing him. But planning and preparing was in order now. Bart went about making his special Christmas cookies in the oven. They had to be just right in order for his special surprise to work. Too little or too much of one ingredient would throw the entire recipe off. And he couldn't allow that to happen. Not on his special day. Bart remembered being a young boy and giving gifts to his parents on Christmas morning. The memory should have been a happy one, but instead it was filled with sorrow. His parents never loved the gifts he gave them. His mother would toss the box across the room and his father would shout and scream. They always hated his gifts. After all the trouble Bart had gone through to make them, his parents never cared. They hated every gift until one day he gave up. He never again gave them his special little gifts. The first Christmas he gave his parents some regular, store-bought piece of junk. His parents had exclaimed with joy. They were finally happy with something he had given them. Bart hid a tear from them that Christmas. His handmade gifts had never been good enough, but the store-bought junk was exactly what they wanted. How could they be so cruel? How could material things be better than the loving crafts of a young boy? But this year would be different. 
This year, everyone would see his wonderful crafts, and they would love them. He just knew it. This was the year. This year was special. He had figured out how to present his crafts in a special way. His parents had never liked what he had made because the presentation was terrible. But a platter of cookies and a handcrafted gift was sure to please. Who could resist it? There were only a few days left until Christmas now. If he wanted his presents to be ready, he would have to hurry. There were a lot of people he intended to send gifts to. He was only one person, however. He wouldn't be able to give everyone a gift. Bart was certain that when the town heard of his good deed, they would be begging him for a gift as well. He rubbed his hands together in delight. Those Christmas days long ago had been dreadful. The look in his mother's eye had filled him with shame. Shame that he didn't give her what she really wanted for Christmas. Shame that he could make such a stupid gift for her. How could he ever think a handcrafted gift would be better than something tangible from a store? Now, however, he realized he had been wrong to feel that way. It wasn't him who should have been filled with shame. No, his mother and father should have been ashamed. They belittled the thoughtful gift of a young child year after year. It was enough to drive a boy mad. And so what if the presents weren't perfect? He was young, his talents were lacking, but he'd had so much time to practice his craft over the years, so much time to get better. He was no longer making ugly little things, but big, beautiful works of art. His days of shoddy craftsmanship were over. He looked down at the plate of cookies and smiled. There was a clear spot in the center for his gift to sit. It would tie the whole thing together nicely. He simply needed to finish making the doll for one of the lucky kids. For that, he needed more material. Bart stood up from the kitchen and headed for the basement door. He had a fresh supply tucked away for his Christmas craft. The basement door creaked open and he heard something rustle below. He jumped at the sound but continued forward. The basement always gave him the creeps. So dark and humid, it was never a place he found comfortable. Too bad it was the only place he could keep his craft supplies. There came a soft whimper from across the room. Bart smiled and approached the woman strapped to the chair with zip ties. Duct tape held her mouth shut so she couldn't scream out and ruin the surprise. He had to be careful not to let his secret slip. If she blabbed to the neighborhood, his surprise would be ruined. She looked up at him with tears in her eyes. It filled his heart with such joy to see her so happy to contribute to his gift. The gesture was moving. He caressed the side of her face and brushed the hair back over her ear. She looked at him and mumbled, but the tape made it impossible to understand. It's only for a bit longer, Bart explained. I have dolls to make for all the little boys and girls in town. If I let you go now, the surprise will be ruined. The woman rocked back and forth. He understood she was getting cramped in this dark, dingy basement, but it would all be worth it. She would see. He used to make his dolls from the dead animals he would find in the backyard. His parents hated those gifts. Maybe it wasn't the gift they hated after all, but the material. The animals were gross little creatures. They could have fleas or disease. At least he understood what his parents had been trying to tell him all along. That's why they had been so upset. He needed to make his dolls from the right material. Bart looked down at the woman's soft, supple flesh. It was smooth and pure. Yes, it was the perfect material for his dolls. He grabbed his knife from the table and flashed the woman a great big smile. She seemed to panic at this, which, of course, he understood. Knives were dangerous when not used correctly. Bart knew how to use it well. She would see. Don't you worry, I'll be gentle. And when we're finished, we'll have so many dollies to give out to the kids. Bart moved in towards the woman in the chair and got to work. This would be the best Christmas ever. Christmas. A terrible time of year. I hate it. I deplore it. Just another day for people to prey on those with extra money in their wallets. These terrible charities coming in here and begging for money. 
the Christmas spirit, they all shout. Well, humbug to that. Christmas spirit? I'm a hardworking man, a business owner. Why should my hard work be handed out to those who do not work as hard as me? The lazy bum should get up and work, that's what I say. Oh, and the employees all expect a bonus for Christmas. Well, why should I? Humbug to that too. What have they done to earn extra money for nothing? Do they understand how business works? We can't just give out money whenever they want us to. I pay these freeloaders any more than they're worth. And they always want Christmas Day off. Is it not enough I let them leave one hour early the night before? Humbug to their day off. If you want to spend time with your family for this dreaded Christmas, do it on your own time. That's what weekends are for. These are the thoughts I have as I walk through the city streets toward my apartment. It's Christmas Eve night, and the people are out in droves. The lights are shining, and there's dreadful holiday cheer around every corner. Such a waste. Such a pity. People everywhere across this city living outside of their means on this day, spending money they can't afford to spend. Humbug to it all. But something curious happens when I approach my front door. For a moment, I swear I see the face of someone I had not seen in a long time. An old friend. Well, no matter. What I saw couldn't have been more than an illusion, a hallucination. I shake away the feeling and head inside. Inside, however, a noise rattles me to my core. Chains, clinking chains rattling through my home. There's an ungodly wail and a specter passes through my wall. I stare at the spirit in awe and fall to my knees. I have not seen something as terrifying and more beautiful. I know this face staring back at me, my old business partner and friend. It can't be. Oh, Marley, I say, have you come back from the dead to show me a different life than this? Have you come to teach me the true meaning of Christmas? It's a miracle that you stand here before me now. I'm ready to see what the spirits have in store for me this night. Marley stares at me with a dreadful glare. It pierces through my body like a knife. His chains rattle and he cries out in pain. No, the spirit moans. I've come to drag you down into the darkest pits of hell where you'll be bound by the heaviest chains imaginable for all eternity. Before I can protest, chains spring up from the floor and wrap around my appendages like tentacles. My heart races fast in my chest as I struggle to free myself. No, this isn't right. It can't be. I must learn the spirit of Christmas. I must change before it's too late. Please, Marley, this isn't right. But Marley is in no mood to listen. The chains pull me down into the dark, deep abyss towards a fiery damnation for all eternity. Everyone knows of Kris Kringle. Santa Claus is all the children call him. They chant his name on Christmas Eve. He is loved, so loved. There are songs written about him, movies, rhymes. Santa Claus gets all of the praise on Christmas Day. Mrs. Claus is always left in the dust. Sure, she's mentioned in a song or two, maybe even a movie. But as such a minor character, cameos for such an important person, she always found it a real shame. Not only was giving gifts to good little boys and girls her idea, but she did most of the work too. While Santa lounged around getting plump and merry all year, Mrs. Claus worked very hard to make sure Christmas always came. This year would be different. She wasn't going to work her fingers to the bone while Santa watched television and ate the cookies she baked for him. This year, she would find time to relax. This year, she would finally get the break she deserved. Mrs. Claus dropped the plate of the last Christmas cookies she would ever bake for St. Nick. The poison was slow, but he would die in the end. And when he took his last breath, Mrs. Claus would leave. 
She would fly to somewhere warm and tropical. Christmas would be no more. She would finally be free. As Santa reached for the plate, a smile crept across her face. That's right, you jolly son of a bitch, she whispered to herself. I want to see you squirm like a bowl full of jelly. She cackled to herself as he took his first bite. This was it. It was all finally coming to an end. Christmas would finally be over. Her nightmare was ending. That Christmas morning, children climbed from their beds and ran to the living room. Like every Christmas morning before, they rushed in with eager hearts. They couldn't wait to see what Santa had brought for them this year. But there was nothing there. No gifts. Nothing. Santa, it seemed, had forgotten them all this year. As Mrs. Claus sat on the beach and admired the warm sun, she thought to herself how good it was to finally be rid of that holly jolly jackass.